Hey friends, welcome to One Little Coder. Are you one of those who applied for a GPT-3 API key from OpenAI and then you did not get it? If you are that and you are disappointed that you could not do text generation um, for your hobby project or your for new startup or whatever it is, don't worry anymore. So you have got GPT Neo. GPT Neo is an open source project from Eleuther AI. So this uh, this group of researchers have cre tried to create something similar to GPT-3. So I wouldn't probably say it's as good as GPT-3. Uh, maybe I, I don't have that much expertise to um, evaluate it. But if you want something better than GPT-2 uh, and you do not have access to GPT-3, which is still not open source, uh, even though the company calls itself OpenAI, GPT-NEO is for you. So how do we use GPT-NEO and um, do text generation is what we are going to see in this video. But if you like GPT-NEO, please make sure you go to the repository and then give a start this would mean a lot to the developer so you can see the description about uh, gpt3 uh, gpt neo here so it's an implementation of model parallel to gpt2 gpt3 and uh, they're trying to scale it uh, up to gpt3 and uh, the there are two models in it so one is the 1.3 billion uh, parameters model the second one is the 2.7 billion parameters model and uh, they have uh, open sourced both the models but but um, if you want to use it, you can go to their website and see how to use it. Um, you, you can you can follow this tutorial and then do it. But if you are like me, who is heavily invested in Hugging Face ecosystem, what that's what I'm going to call it from now onwards. So if you are heavily invested in Hugging Face ecosystem, all you have to do is in a couple of lines of the code, you would have a generator model in place. And that's what we're going to see how to do it. So first of all, like I said, if you like this project, make sure you start the repository. That would mean a lot to the developer. Next, this is the page where uh, the hugging face, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a hugging face model hub and you would see the description about the model. So it talks about GPT Neo 1.3 billion model, which is available on hugging face. And then also it gives you details about the model and then some limitations, which is definitely something that I would like to highlight as well. So GPT uh, Neo or GPT-3 or any of these models that you see, um, these models are trained on a huge corpus of language that may not have uh, been censored or uh, you know it might have bias that typical human beings might have had on social media and all those things so if you are using it and then if you find something irrelevant please uh, make sure that you know it doesn't um, um, it doesn't affect the research that p these people have put together so they, they you, like we need to acknowledge that there could be bias in it so maybe uh, it is another set of research that we need to do to eliminate them um, but this is uh, this is again a huge leap forward in the open source research community where they have uh, tried to replicate something like gpt3 so if you find something that is uh, irrelevant uh, Please report it to them and then also, you know, understand that it's part of um, part of such uh, models and then we should work forward as a community to eliminate it. So having said that, uh, so now you can see um, how, how the details about how this model is trained. Let's right away get into the code. So I've got a collab uh, notebook, which I will share in the GitHub, uh, sorry, um, YouTube description, which you can check it out. So I'll share uh, GPT News um, URL and uh, Eleuther AIS. Uh, link and also the model hub link from hugging face and then finally the collab notebook which you can check so the first thing is install the latest transformers package uh, the python library from uh, github itself so that's what i'm doing here you can see pip install and i'm directly installing it from git um, so you, you get the latest development version that you can see so you can see the kind of version that you have got which is uh, the development version 4.5.0 development version so once you are done with that once you are done with i'm not going to run it because it takes a lot of time uh, especially the uh, model downloading process so i'm not going to run it uh, but you can actually see so the next step is you import pipeline from transformers so if you are familiar with the text generation um, within transformers so you need to use the pipeline value text generation uh, like you probably would do for text classification text summarization or anything so here we are trying to do text generation and the model that we want is the model that you have here in the hugging face model hub so illusory ai um, slash gpt new 1.3 billion that's that's what currently we have got and then download it um, so when when you run this thing um, so this model is going to get downloaded and assigned to generator so you can see that um, it has downloaded a lot of files so one five gig, gig file and uh, there are a lot of files so it, it takes a bit of amount um, but you know like you are not downloading it actually on your local machine you can try it out on your local machine as well but um, 
Google Colab is easy for me to try it out. So I've done it. So let me slightly zoom it. Probably you don't need it's just three lines of the code. So first step, like I said, install latest transformers from GitHub. Second, import pipeline from transformers. Next, download the model, which is Eleuther AI GPT Neo 1.3 billion. Once you're done with that, now you can start the text generation process. So as you know, with every text generation, you have to give a prompt. You have to give uh, you have to give something on which the the model would you know build the next set of text and then you need to also uh, specify uh, what is the length of the text that you want so there are two important things that you have to specify one is uh, one is uh, the prompt text like what is the text on which uh, you want the text to be generated like next text and second is like how much how much length you want it to be uh, so what i've done is i've given a text here which says like superman versus batman is and then i've said i want minimum 50 um so when you look at it you can actually see uh so the output uh let me show you the output how it looks like and why did i do this thing so when i print the output this is how it looks like so it's uh it's like a dictionary or json um within a list so it's, uh, it's basically json so to parse that what i'm doing is I'm, uh, I'm taking the first element of the list and then i'm just giving you the value of this key which is generated text and you can see there is nothing nothing between like nothing else so it says uh, Superman versus Batman is the only DC Comics crossover between these two characters. This is one of the most anticip more anticipated events this year because Batman is scheduled to appear in the upcoming crossover that will introduce Superman. So uh, ideally, this is not supposed to be the actual text somewhere on internet. So what CPT ideally has done is uh, found out wherever Superman versus Batman is something like this. And then it has tried to put together a, a text uh, group or a bunch of text uh, up to 50 characters, uh, which uh, which uh, which makes sense uh, for anyone to do it. So what I will do next is I will uh, I will execute it for you to see so that um, you can actually see like what is happening here. So let's go ahead and then run something. Uh, again, the reason I've used print here is because you can see that there are escape characters. Uh, when you are seeing it with escape characters, it might look a little bit awkward. So that's why I've, uh, I've actually used print, which uh, which parses those. So let's give a text. Um, in this case, um, let's even ask about GPT-3. GPT-3 is and then uh, let's run it. So you can see that it takes a bit of time to run it. So we just started running it and then you can see that it actually takes some time um, and you can see like, um, yeah, this uh, what is happening here and uh, it is it is still executing. It's probably so far it's around 18, 19 seconds, 20. So I didn't, I didn't want to cut it so that you actually get to know like how much time it takes when you give it text. Again, uh, the time might differ based on uh, the parameters that you're giving. Okay, 32 seconds, it's completed. So let us execute it. So it says GPT-3 is used internally in a few production stage applications, but it has been very effectively used in pre-production models. I want to add the following to the risk management policy. So yeah, it has, it has generated something, um, you know, like coherent. I wouldn't say probably, you know, like um, very meaningful, but it is something coherent. There are certain things that I actually tried um, using their inference API. So you can also go to Hugging Face in inference API, hosted inference API, and then try it out. But there are certain things that that uh, I actually like that is uh, this is how you read a CSV in uh, Pandas. Okay, let's let's see. So I'm going to say uh, probably like 200 and then let's run it. This is how you read CSV in Pandas. Um, I, I'm not sure uh, if uh, what I am desiring is what I'm going to get as an output because you know that, right? This is like randomized. We don't, we have not set any seed value. So the result that I got before may not be the result that I will get right now. But again, let's have a look at it. Um, what is the output that we would get? It's running um, 23 seconds. Last time it took 32 seconds for us. Uh, it, it has completed in 28 seconds. Let's run it and see. Okay, so that's that's really awesome. Like I've given 20, 200, uh, but you can actually see. So when you said this is how you read CSV in Pandas, it says data frame, uh, like how do you read a CSV? And I think this is um, this is one of the greatest uh, thing about GPT uh, family models. 
especially with GPT Neo being an open source, the potential is really huge. So I have seen previously um, people who do SEO, people who write content, they have been heavily uh, trying to leverage GPT models, even when they have got API key. But I think this is one of the areas that is not very, very much explored, or at least I'm not very aware of where you can in fact use this for a question and answer generation. Like uh, there, are, there are a lot of other NLP techniques that could assist you in question and answer generation. But imagine like if you want to teach programming to somebody and then uh, if, if somebody who is like starting completely wants to learn programming and then you want to generate a hint for them. And this is absolutely a very easy way for you to do it without, you know, much of a leg work because like, what, what did we just do? We just, we just gave a prompt that would make sense. That's it, right? Like we didn't do anything else. We just gave a prompt that actually could, uh, could mean something uh, for GPT to generate something coherent. And that coherent answer is uh, most likely the right one. Um, but uh, when I shared with others, I also got to know like there are some uh, um, gibberish answers, like uh, it was giving JavaScript, all those things. But I'm saying like if with, with a decent amount of uh, data processing, uh, we could ideally come up with something that could, uh, that could give a decent result. And uh, that is what uh, GPT Neo's um, power, I would say. Um, I mean, like what OpenAI did not do in terms of uh, open source, open sourcing the model, which which they were initially even scared about. I don't know, like what is the reason? Finally, they ended up giving access uh, to Microsoft. Um, if you have not read that news, an exclusive rights to their API. Um, I don't know what that exclusive means. Again, um, that's an altogether different topic altogether. But uh, thank you so much to the Ulithra AI uh, like group of researchers for creating something like GPT uh, Neo. And also the greatest thing is uh, uploading it on Hugging Face uh, model hub. So Hugging Face is, uh, you know, like Android for NLP, so I would say probably. Uh, so it has got a good ecosystem. So having Hugging uh, the model uploaded on Hugging Face means anybody could access this model in a couple of lines. And that is what we have really witnessed. So in just, just you know, installing the package, uh, loading, the, loading the class and then uh, initiating, downloading the model and then generating the text and then finally printing the text in just a very few lines, probably like five lines of the code, you have actually built a close to the state of the art uh, model text generation solution. So now you can use this in uh, something like Streamlit and build a web application where people could type something and then get a solution. And uh, you could also do pre-processing, right? You could like generate five texts and then see where, which one is the most appropriate based on your working condition. And then you could uh, test something like uh, even for that matter, like I, I tried a few things like, um, uh, let's say like import pandas as PD. Um, I'm, I'm giving an escape character uh, intentionally, but NumPy as NP and uh, let's see. So my idea is that uh, this could be really uh, helpful in um, programming um, or at least like teaching programming or improving programming experience for beginners who might be intimidated by, you know, like the kind of syntaxes that we use. Um, I don't know what other potential it has, but probably like I am one little coder. So um, for me, uh, programming comes to my mind first, but um, if you are somebody who wants to use it for content generation, marketing, SEO, this is uh, this is definitely a boon. Um, see, like it, it shows something, right? I mean, like it shows something that is related to Python. Uh, maybe this is a different code. You can run it and then try to see. So m m my objective is to show you primarily how to how easy it is to use it, and then also to introduce you that there is a new fun um, new package um, or new model, I should say. So. Like, like you see, uh, they, have, they have even highlighted if you're just here to play with your pre-trained models, we strongly recommend you try out Hugging Face Transformer Integration. If you want to, you know, um, do um, um, extra training and then, you know, uh, uh, with uh, fine tuning and then have a different checkpoint, you can download their original model. But if you are just want, wanting to use their existing uh, pre-trained model, Hugging Face is the easiest way for you to get started. And you could see that with Collab uh, and uh, Another thing probably I wanted to highlight is I've not even selected GPU, it's just uh, CPU and uh, it does its job. So whether you want to use it with, uh, let's say, um, uh, Streamlit application or you want to create uh, some kind of an API service and then expose, expose it to your Android app or iOS app or something like that, you could still do. So the potential is endless. And uh, uh, once again, like I said, please go go to go to their website and thank them. Uh, for uh, for giving this to us, um, give a star um, and uh, give a shout out to them and also to the Hugging Face 
team for uh, making it faster um, and getting it in our hands so that i could make a video and then share it with you and then you could actually start building something that could help a lot of people or transform um, transform something uh, that you are uh, keenly working on i hope this video was helpful if you have any questions please let me know in the comment section otherwise stay safe and this is an amazing project thanks to the team